I'm Andy DeBellis with the uh, European People's Party Convention in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, with me now is uh, Mr. Konstantin Koschev, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Duma in Russia. Uh, Mr. Koschev, uh, Russia seems to be in the uh, limelight, uh, in the forefront of almost all major issues concerning the European Union, from energy to the conflict uh, in the Caucasus, Caucasus last year. Um, how has that played itself out? It seems that Russia has been vindicated in that um, Georgia was the one who made the first move in that event. Has that altered European Union opinion of Russia as not being aggressive? Well, uh, you know, it is always easier to uh, use a simplified approach in that uh, kind of conflicts. And in case you do not uh, look into details in the prehistory of a conflict, this one would definitely seem to you as if a uh, uh, small but uh, free and democratic Georgia fighting this large, ugly, aggressive uh, Russia. But this is very much simplified and the conflict does exist for itself and it's a conflict not between Georgia and Russia, it's a conflict between Georgia and South Ossetia, Georgia and Abkhazia. Mm -hmm. These two conflicts have existed in during decades and uh, they have been created, they have been constructed by Joseph Stalin in the late 20s, in the early 30s. So Europe uh, rejecting the, um, the heritage of uh, Stalinism in case of, let's say, Soviet Union, uh, Baltic states relations, yes. I believe should practice the same approach in case you have other compositions created but by that Soviet totalitarian regime. And this is what people in Abkhazia and in South Ossetia has, have never accepted. And this is what they want to oppose now. And maybe you may have a political solution on that conflict, but for that you need to communicate directly between Tbilisi and Schinval, Tbilisi and Suhumi. And as long as you do not communicate, as long as you try to use military force in order to solve these conflicts, you will come nowhere. And this is what Russia tries to prevent. And this is why Russia was forced, I would like to stress it, was forced to intervene and was forced later on to recognize the independence of these two republics for the mm -hmm. simple reason we had no other alternative if we, if we uh, had to secure lives of people living there to, to bring security and peace to the region. Well, how ironic we're here in a, uh, a palace named for Stalin in Warsaw and talking openly about these kind of issues. There's a saying in the United States, you don't tug on Superman's cape. It looks like Georgia did that in this case apart from the human tragedy of lives lost, politically, do you think that President Schock has really walked right into a bear trap? Well, I don't know, because uh, the major mistake uh, which Saakashvili made, I believe, was to promise his uh, people, his electorate, to solve the problems of South Ossetia and Abkhazia by the end of his second term. As, as soon as you give that kind of promises, you are trapped. You have no other options but to, to do something, and that was he was trying to do, and one more issue, which is extremely important. In February 2008, Kosovo declared its independence. In April 2008, some European countries started to recognize Kosovo. I believe, so I believe. the stage for South Ossetia and Abkhazia. I, I believe, I believe that at that moment, Saakashvili uh, interpreted that development in a wrong way. Like, look, uh, territorial integrity of states is not longer a holy cow in Europe. And this is how I need to, to do something. I need to, 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 to be quick, I need to be resolute in order to keep the territorial integrity of Georgia while the territorial integrity of other countries like Serbia are being uh, changed uh, without, without uh, any, any agreement on that. He probably thought the US and EU had his back, but they said he was on his own once that started. Uh, yes, I believe that uh, it was an uh, individual decision by Mr. Saakashvili, but on the other hand, I cannot deny that all these uh, games which, uh, let's say, NATO played with Georgia, like yes. we shall invite you, we shall give you a, a me me membership Intentions. action plan, and uh, me membership is absolutely possible and we will we'll definitely support you in all your uh, disagreements with Russia. That was also a very false, wrong signal given, and maybe misinterpreted by, by, by Mr. Saakashvili. Obviously. But in any case, it was a wrong attitude and it provoked this type of developments, yes. Would the uh, Caucasus and the EU-Russian relations better be served if he were not the president of, Ru of Georgia? Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Saakashvili has uh, repeatedly promised us on 
different in different occasions not to use military force, which he used in August last year. So Mr. Saakashvili personally does not have any confidence in, in, in Russia. We cannot communicate with a person who lies. This is what he has done and what this is what he is still doing and I believe that uh, the uh, opposition in Georgia, inside of Georgia, now understand it much better than previously. So again, what happens with Mr. Saakashvili is definitely a domestic uh, affair for Georgia and we will definitely not interfere, not at all. But I believe that uh, the chance for improving relations between Russia and Georgia will come sooner or later, but will come when we have some other leadership in, in Georgia. Well, Stalin is gone, but here we have one of the faces of a new Russia, Konstantin Kosachev, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Duma. I'm Andy DeBellis for NETV.